Hello, I'm Bernard Hickey from interest.co.nz and welcome to our weekly currencies report with Dan Bell from HiFX. Welcome back, Dan, to Never a Dull Moment. And this week has, we always say every week, is, it's never been more exciting. Well, this week, boy, big figures, as they say, full cent movements, you know, in half an hour, an hour or whatever. Have you ever seen it this volatile? Uh, I have, I have actually, uh, in my uh, in my short history, I suppose, in financial markets. Um, back in two thousand and eight, when uh, when Lehman Brothers, the investment bank Lehman Brothers, collapsed, it was it was similarly volatile. But um, absolute carnage this week. Um, we, uh, we we were sort of talking about the non-farm payrolls number uh, last Friday being a big event, and then obviously Standard and Poor's came out and trumped that, downgrading the US. And Monday morning, uh, we saw um, markets um, respond to to that to that event and a huge uh, huge swings in global equity markets, commodity and currency markets. It's been literally one of the most volatile weeks in the, in the history of financial markets. So just to put some context around the movements in the New Zealand dollar, which over the last couple of weeks has gone from. 88 cents down to 79 cents at one stage and in the last week from uh, 84 or so down to 80, 80 and then back up to 82 and a half, is that right? That's right, that's right, yep. So in less than, uh, in less than two weeks we've had the New Zealand dollar trade at that all-time post-float high of around 88.40 and uh, on Monday we traded down just under 80 cents around 79.60. So. Um, pretty remarkable. That's literally in less than a week. Uh, you know that move of of over ten percent in the New Zealand dollar. Uh, also, the New Zealand dollar against the uh, the euro dropping from almost sixty two down to the low point five sixes. Um, big move for the New Zealand dollar there against even against the pound. We dropped from you know post float highs up around point five three down to around the sort of point four nine. So um, the New Zealand dollar has, uh, through that the, this this period of of risk aversion, has been one of the worst performing currencies. Let's talk about that risk aversion. Dumb question: Why would people rush to the U.S. dollar when it's just been downgraded? It does seem counterintuitive, doesn't it? Um, and I think um, you know you had a few people second guessing uh, what would happen if the U.S. was downgraded. I think you have to go back to the fact that the U.S. dollar is still the world's reserve currency, uh, and that. In a risk-off event, typically investors have a home bias, so they'll be unwinding positions um, in equity markets, commodities and other currencies and taking their money back to the US dollar and investing in US treasuries, which is you know the deepest, most liquid safe haven market in the world. And ultimately there is no market to match that US Treasury market. So despite the US being downgraded, uh, which again, you know, you would have thought US Treasuries would have been uh, a bit of a sell, uh, US Treasuries were a massive buy and uh, you've seen US yields obviously go down um, you know, massively this week and interest rates around the world go down massively, interest rate yields that is, um, you know, as investors have, have, you know, have scrambled into safe haven assets. And the other big event this week around the US dollar and those US treasuries was the statement on Wednesday morning from the US Federal Reserve about interest rates and the potential for quantitative easing. How did the market take it? What, what was the key thing to come out of that? Yeah, well after, the, um, after Monday and Tuesday being, you know, we had swings in the equity markets of, of over four percent in both the, both those days. Um, I think everyone was looking for some type of immediate policy response from the Federal Reserve, and Wednesday morning was their uh, was their official sort of meeting and announcement. Um, effectively, Bernanke came out and said, um, you know, he's going to keep interest rates. Uh, at, this, uh, at these at these low rates for for an, an even extended more you know more extended period, guaranteeing low rates for another two years. Um, initially, I think the markets were a little bit disappointed that he didn't have some sort of immediate policy response to say, "Hey, we're going to be back in there," you know, with with, with our bond purchasing. That's right. Where was the helicopter? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think you know initially people were were a bit disappointed, but as uh, the longer term uh, yields started to come off again, um, you know, in equity markets and risk uh, assets started to rally uh, about sort of half an hour after that statement, and the New Zealand dollar went up with that as well. But you know, the following day we, we saw another big down day as the European um, banks and sovereign debt concerns came back into focus. Let's look at that. Um, later in the week, there were real concerns about France and the French banks, which moved markets. How's that shaping up as we go into the weekend? Yeah, well, it, it almost feels like um, the European banks are coming under the same kind of uh, scrutiny and questioning as the US banks did back in the subprime mess back in 2007, 2008. So 
a lot of analysts are starting to look at the banks' balance sheets, particularly in France. France has quite a significant exposure to Greek banks. Well, in fact, a lot of Greek banks are owned by French banks. So naturally, concerns in Greece, which continue, are starting to you know spill over into France. And you know there was also rumours that France's sovereign uh, sovereign uh, credit rating was was potentially going to be downgraded. French banks lost you know some of them some of the major banks there lost over ten percent in one trading uh, one trading night. So um, yeah, big big concerns in Europe. I mean. Um, we, we, you know, it continues to be a slow-moving train wreck, and structurally, um, you know, you have to, you know, continue to be concerned with with what's going to happen there. And inside Europe, the Swiss National Bank surprised a few people on Thursday night by saying it was even considering a peg to the euro, essentially fixing its currency after years of being a floater. Indeed, yeah, it, it was quite a surprise. I mean, they have had huge issues with the Swiss franc this year. The Swiss franc is, is um, close to 44% stronger against the US dollar this year wow. due to the safe haven demand that, that uh, has been going on, um, which has been hammering their economy. Their equity market has been one of the worst performing equity markets uh, over the last um, three months, losing significant, uh, you know, significant value. And so I think um, you know they, the Swiss National Bank came out dropping interest rates earlier on, um, and overnight they've come out with a statement, which I think at this stage is more jawboning than anything. They're saying you know a, a peg to the euro is would be would be would be quite uh, would be quite crazy in my opinion, but you know it certainly has markets second guessing them and also talking about um, you know taking a, a negative real rate uh, on on actual uh, Swiss franc deposits. So. Um, you know, just trying to stop these 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 flows you know, out of out of the US dollar and, and other assets and into the Swiss franc, which is damaging their economy. And elsewhere in Europe, the Bank of England came out with some statements, almost uh, ignored and all the drama <laughs> elsewhere. But um, what, what's their view on their economy and interest rates and what they're doing? Um, well, I mean, the UK has been in the media this week for all the wrong reasons, and. Um, you um, you know you get the feeling that there's there's some some huge political issues that are going to continue to impact them. Obviously, on the uh, the economic side, they mentioned the global headwinds that are that obviously everyone is exposed to at the moment. Um, their position at the moment is that you know their interest rates are still set at about 0.5 percent and will continue to stay at these low levels for an extended period. Um, there has been discussion about another round of sort of bond purchasing or quantitative easing. So, wouldn't be surprised to see something else from. Uh, from the Bank of England, and listen, I imagine that will probably be a, a big discussion point when all the central bankers meet in Jackson Hole in a couple of weeks. Just heading back towards our part of the world, uh, China allowed its yuan to increase slightly against the US dollar mm -hmm. to its highest levels in 17 years this week. Uh, is that a sign the Chinese are easing up perhaps on their own peg? Yeah, I think it's, um, it's an interest, it's interesting timing. I mean, we had inflation data out of China again this week, which came in um, slightly higher than expected, up over 6%, or 6.5%. So part of them increasing the value of the uh, renminbi is to, I think, curb some of the inflationary pressure that, uh, that they have in their economy. Obviously, they've been raising the reserve requirements for their banks, which is one way of, of curbing inflationary pressure. But naturally, if their currency is stronger, then they've got uh, a stronger currency to purchase their imports. Um, uh, potentially also a, a little bit of a... Um, a, a good thing, I think, for the global economy. If China has, uh, you know, more purchasing pa uh, power, then you know it could be could be good for the global economy in terms of them buying more, you know, more products from offshore. And in Australia, we saw weaker employment data this week, and mm. the New Zealand dollar strengthened a bit against the Australian dollar. Yeah, again, we pushed up to another 12-month high against the Aussie dollar, just over 81 cents. So. Uh, employment data from Australia weaker than expected across the board. Uh, unemployment rate ticking up to 5.1%, and uh, the participation rate in new jobs was was also uh, negative. So um, yeah, the the Australian um, you know story starts to starts to look uh, weaker by the weaker by the um, by the minute really. And you've got more uh, more of the Aussie banks coming out and. Uh, effectively calling for interest rate cuts from the Reserve Bank of Australia this year. So 
will be very interesting to see what they have to say uh, at their next meeting in another three or four weeks. Mm, those markets pricing in rate cuts. And this time last week we were talking about markets here pricing in rates on hold. Mm -hmm. And as we've seen over the last couple of days, economists have come out and said, well, yeah, mm, yeah the markets might have it right. We think uh, <laughs> yeah. might be delayed until December. How's that uh, affecting things here? Yeah, certainly looking that way, um, you know, what a difference a week or two can make to the interest rate market in New Zealand. And you've seen, you know, a huge, uh, a huge drop in yields and, and most of the, uh, you know, the, most of the swap rates, the wholesale swap rates that uh, have an impact on New Zealand, on the New Zealand mortgage market. So, um, you know, I think everyone's changed the outlook for New Zealand uh, monetary policy in, you know, December or, you know, potentially back to next year, um, you know, with the way that, you know, the global developments are playing out at the moment. So just looking ahead for the next couple of weeks, what are markets, uh, exchange rate traders going to be watching? Well, you know, we want to see some kind of settle, you know, we want to see risk appetite obviously settle down and the US equity market continues to drive that. Um, you know, I did see uh, one analyst sort of referring to a lot of the flow that, we're, that they're seeing in the, in the New York Stock Exchange as being, um, you know, more sort of retail in nature. So that perhaps, you know, you've got um, a lot of the sort of institutional investors sitting on the sidelines, perhaps not as much liquidity uh, as you would ordinarily see. It is the summer months in the Northern Hemisphere, you know, so, you know, perhaps we've got some people on holiday and you've got a few crazy retail investors just going nuts. So hopefully we see a little bit more liquidity come into that market, let the dust settle and, and get some kind of gauge of where it's going to go next. Um, and Europe, obviously, that continues to be a key. And I mean, uh, the way you know the way things continue to play out, you know, I think the market has really taken a big sort of jolt and 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 pricing and you know greater risks to the global economy going forward. So I think people are going to continue to remain nervous, and markets I think will remain volatile. Perhaps you all just need a holiday. I think so. <laughs> I think so. Dan Bell from HighFX. They're talking about the week's currency events. I'm Bernard Hickey for Interest.co.nz.